Hola, and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We talk everything animation here, including OKKO, Let's Be Heroes, which we'll be getting into right now. I'm your host for today, Alex Bonilla, and I'm joined by Michelle Andrew. Hello. And Steve Zeck. Hello. Yeah, you can find our previous discussions about OKKO and uh, other animated properties we cover at OverlyAnimated.com. You can also subscribe to us uh, at iTunes at OverlyAnimated.com slash iTunes so, or wherever you listen to us uh, on podcasts. Uh, we always appreciate wherever you listen to us, if you could leave reviews or ratings and let, let us know what you think about uh, about our podcast. But yeah, today we'll be getting back into the swing of things. It's uh, our first OKKO OK podcast of 2018. Woo! And- <laughs> Yay! We, we finally got the the little ball of energy back in our life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, but, I, uh, yeah, I've yeah. been on a podcast in like forever. All my all the shows I regularly do has been on hiatus. Yeah, this is our first major Cartoon Network show that's yeah. come back this year, yeah. so that, that's good. Uh, today, in particular, we'll be discussing uh, Let's Watch the Pilot, which actually did uh, already was already online since last year, but it just now is going to have a TV premiere. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're, we're also going to cover Mystery Science Fair 21S, Aladdin Logic, and OK Denby. Uh, hey. And just for disclosure's sake, there is a fourth episode uh, titled RMS and Brandon's First Episode. Uh, so I guess a Brandon episode. Uh, that will air later this month, but we don't have it available currently online. So, uh, uh, Michelle, your thoughts on, on a potential Brandon episode? <laughs> um, I feel really bad. Who's Brandon? I don't even remember <laughs> who that is. If you describe him, I'm sure I'll remember. Oh, but like, I, I, they're like a, one of them's a skeleton. Yeah, yeah, Brandon is the bear. He's the bear. Oh, yeah. what? Why does he get an episode? He was the one that dissed Chaos Macaroni Mom present. I don't, I'm not sure I am a fan of him. <laughs> well, he's going to get his own episode. Her- hooray! I mean, if like- <laughs> his relationship with Skeleton Guy, maybe it'll be a good one. Because I like their rapport a lot, but him on his own, I'm a little... I don't know how to feel about that yet. It feels like, um, like this version of Ronaldo episode. No! Oh, oh please, no. No, no! No, don't let that be the thing that carries over to other shows. No, uh, Brandon, please. Yeah, but be- before, uh, until we get to Brandon, we have these four episodes. I'm, uh, I, I called it just the mini Dendy bomb because we have two Dendy Yay! episodes almost back to back. All our hearts are satisfied. <laughs> yes, as we've made clear several times on these podcasts, we are all uh, members of the Dendy fan club, so oh, these are yes. <laughs> very well appreciated episodes. And uh, I think uh, these episodes did very well with uh, handling uh, Dendy character development, mm-hmm. which is uh, something that I, at least I appreciate very much. Uh, Michelle, how do you feel about how Dendy was handled in terms of her character in the two episodes that uh, starred her, her her presence? Oh, it was so good. Because I think one thing Dendy has really been struggling with is what it means to be a real friend. Because she hasn't had a friend before KO. So it kind of makes sense that she would have to learn how to, like, treat him nice, like, through a process of trial and error. But I think both Mystery Science Theater and um, OK Dendy helped her realize, like, one, like, how to be a good friend, and two, how to, like, understand what KO goes through in a day in a way she couldn't really before until she experienced it herself. So I think um, it did a really good job, I think, on both accounts for each episode. And I would be really happy because now, like, she can be more empathetic, probably. And that's a good thing. <laughs> uh, Steve, your thoughts on Dendi? Oh, I agree with Michelle, man. It's a very big development episode. And Dendi, like I said, she always reminds me a little bit of Paradox. And yeah. I, I think we're getting a similar development that we got with Paradox in terms of being more empathetic, being kind of more human, you know, more of a friend. Um. Just me. It seems Dendi, though, she has a bit of an antagonistic relationship with her teacher. I kind of uh, love that teacher. Yeah. And, and by the way, someone on, on Toonjong commented that she looks a lot more attractive than she did last time. So I got to wonder if she got any 
surgery, cosmetic surgery in between episodes. Uh, ha- have, have we seen this teacher before? Yeah, I, don't, teacher, I don't know. Cameo in a previous episode. That that's possible, I guess. But yeah, <laughs> the, 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 just change the character design. I mean, <laughs> well, well, what's wrong with my own head cannon? But yeah, but look, the more dendy, the better. Um, yeah. uh, she's just so adorable, and and she it just she's just so funny too. Um, especially okay, dendy. I love how she just spends a day in Kale's life. Um, I was kind of hoping maybe it would sort of be sort of like a sort of like a remake of a previous episode, like. Like the first episode, you know, when only like similar things happen, only Dendi's in Ko's place. That would have been good. And and also, can I say, we got to see uh, the uh, Shannon and Daryl and Ernesto as babies, which I thought mm-hmm. was so cute. And, and what was the last one? Oh yeah, and uh, oh yeah, watch the pilot. I almost forget about that one because that was such a long time ago. That's the ultimate meta humor episode. It's uh, I'm not sure what show they're trying to reference in terms of their character's relationships, but that was cool too. Yeah, we'll definitely dive into the whole meta side of things in a bit because it, it's also apparent in other in another episode in this uh, in this group. But just before we move off, Dendi, I I do want to just praise especially Mystery Science Fair 21s yeah. because of the fact that like uh, for the longest time, Dendi has always been the good character, the character that saves Ko from something else. But like this feels like the first real episode where uh, Dendi is actually doing something wrong, and the show makes it apparent that she's doing something wrong, mm-hmm. and like makes Dendi herself realize like, oh, I- I'm doing something wrong. I need to, I need to fix how I'm treating Ko. Uh, I just lo- love that that side of it because uh, Dendi has been such a fan favorite. But it def- there definitely is the danger of veering into okay, this is just the character who does everything right all the time. She's just going to be pulled in whenever something's messed up. Um, so it's just nice to finally see Dendi get a little bit more dimension to her character, for sure, especially in that episode. And just, yeah, can't... I would agree. Can I just mention one thing before I forget? Back to the uh, the science fair episode. The, what's the name? Mystery... Mystery Science Fair 21 fair. Hits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I was hoping, I was sort of hoping, though, that in, in Kale's class, or at least in his school, that Fink went there, too. Like... That's I think she's too young. young. Oh, where's your, where's your, but that'd be cool though if she was sort of like Dendi's academic rival. I kind of think that would be kind of neat. Well, it was interesting that they made the relationship where Dendi's re- rivalry is with the teacher. Like, yeah. kind of like yeah. she's desperate, desperate for approval. Oh, I love that, and the teacher's having none of it. <laughs> uh, and uh, I. I guess uh, I guess we can focus on this episode particularly first before we go off into other things because there is a lot of stuff to take out of here. We've already mentioned the teacher, Miss Quantum. Uh, I think her, her voice actress, uh, Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, who also voices uh, Dr. Maheshwaran on Steven Universe. She does a really good job of being <gasps> menacing. Yeah. Oh, man, she did such a good job. I didn't even notice that. Good for her. <laughs> She's been doing really good the past couple months in terms of episodes that have aired. Yeah. yeah, and she does make a notable appearance in another episode we'll talk about later. But <laughs> um, really, but yeah, but also like in the school, there are a couple of uh, gags. Uh, one joke I uh, I especially enjoyed was was like, "Oh, you're going to be suspended from school," and we cut to outside and there's literally <laughs> someone hanging <laughs> from tied the school. up. Yeah. Uh, it, it was a bit darker of a gag than you'd expect from nor- a normal show, but I, I enjoyed that very much. It's a dangerous Maybe. place, Alex. You never know what's going to happen. Oh. Yeah. And uh, then, so the, uh, Dendi and Ko decide to work together on the science project, and Dendi decides, hey, what, what about TKO? How how we get him out? And so we're, we're bringing that plot point back. Okay. I wonder. Yay. What, like, uh, when did Dendi ever meet TKO? It's just, just a... Just heard about it offhand in between episodes. I don't know if she saw him when he appeared yeah. the first time, but it's probably something Ko would tell her about after the fact, just because they're like pretty good friends at this point. So she's like at least aware of him, even if she hasn't seen him for herself. Yeah, and Ko seems the type to like tell Dendi everything that happens yeah. to yeah. him. Like, <laughs> hey, th- th- this happened to me. Do you know what what that was? <laughs> You're a smart person. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so it it seems like we're this episode is going down. Okay, we're gonna see how to control TKO, and that might actually be important for plot reasons later later on down the line. 
So we we go into Dendy's lab and uh, hey, what do you know? This is this episode is a Deadster's laboratory. Oh my! <laughs> I, I don't know. If- oh, do you see the the end credits? Like the very at the very end, the end title card. It says the end and with all apologies to <laughs> people at Deadster's <laughs> laboratory. Yeah, yeah, that was really good. Yeah, there was a, a lot pulled from here, and uh, I guess uh, we can also pull. Let's watch the pilot into here. These are two episodes back to back that depend a lot on meta on meta humor, and uh, I- I'm just wondering what you guys uh, feel about that, like uh, pulling jokes from other shows so blatantly. Like, does uh, does it work for you? Is it a bit distracting, or ha- what, where are you, where are you on this, um, Steve? Let's go to you first. All right, it's all right. I was disappointed because I wanted to actually see the pilot, and not just people talking over it. But though no, I've seen the pilot, but that'd be cool. Like a uh, like a certain like episode of Teen Titans Go, they sort of did sort of something similar when they watched an ep- the first episode of the original series. Um, but yeah, um, it's a uh, sure reminds me of it's like a uh, like how Kale's like this child actor. It's like I know if you've ever seen like each like a show called E Two Hollywood Stories or something like that, when you get like cast together and from pre from old shows and they don't get along at first. Um, I'm not sure who Kale was supposed to be though. Was supposed to be like uh, maybe somebody like uh, like Haley Joe Osmond or somebody. I I don't know. <laughs> you're just you're just trying to pull real life comparisons. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but but, uh, but I, yeah, I do also like we see Boxman as makes a little cameo. I wish you kind of saw more of the other characters, their actor versions of them make little cameo appearances. So in your case, you'd prefer that they just go all the way in ra- rather than like have it be half and half. Yeah, you're gonna. Um, do- you, Michelle, uh, h- how do you feel about the balance of meta humor in these two episodes? I mean, I thought it was a good balance because they didn't detract from what like the message of the story itself was. I think especially the balance for Mystery Science Fair Twenty One X because they only really used it for like eh, maybe like less than a minute of the whole episode. And it was effective. And as someone who's, like, aware of Dexter's Laboratory, because, like, who isn't, who likes cartoons, uh-huh. but hasn't, like, didn't grow up watching it, like, every week, I, I appreciate it and, and could enjoy it well enough without being super um, aware of the source material. So I think in that sense it was really effective, and it, it didn't feel like too much for me, so... And for the pilot episode, like, honestly, I think the thing is that they kind of expect that you've watched the pilot if you're, like, a big fan of the show. Because, yeah, they really don't, like, show you a lot. The essence of the pilot isn't really the point of that episode at all. But I really did love, like, the the, the drama between the characters because that felt like, I don't know, it was, like, pretty amusing to me. And also their outfits were so good. I loved it. <laughs> Their Hollywood attire was on point. Um, I definitely want to praise Enid rocking the casual look. Yes, <laughs> she looks so good. I kind of wonder in that, in that in that world, maybe is she like a big like pop star or something? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, and by the way, I imagine her like re- being really well with the lifestyle yeah. brand. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could totally see that. Yeah. Um. And by the way, it took me. Just a couple of like moments to get the Dexter Laboratory mention. I didn't get right at right away. I didn't get it right away. And then like, oh yeah, that's Dexter's lab. Yeah, I think where it stood out to me for like uh, the most obviously was where uh, TKO. Well, obviously, just skipping ahead a little bit. Uh, eventually, they uh, managed to trigger TKO, and TKO comes out of control and begins destroying stuff. And so when TK was destroying stuff, uh, then he begins screaming uh, like "my incubator," like uh, in a more like like uh, deadstery accent. Like that's where it becomes most obvious, and where like the only moment where like eh, that's a bit too far. <laughs> like I love but, that uh, totally subverted my expectation. Because when they, when they introduced Dendy's precious like first like invention, I thought for sure TKO was going to destroy it, but they actually surprised me that the way it was destroyed. Yeah, yeah, that, that's uh, definitely something that they set up er, earlier in the episode. In, in general, this is a, a an episode that like Dendi really mis- mistreats Ko, <laughs> makes him yeah. uh, walk. Uh, I know there was the one gag where they make him run on the treadmill with uh, with Legos that on would it. Be so so was... painful. I felt for him. 
Yeah, especially barefoot. Uh, yeah. I, I I have personal experience with that. My my little brother <laughs> played with Legos a lot, and that does. I can't imagine having to do it over and over and over again on a treadmill. He does have a high pain tolerance. We learned this very early on. Yeah. And spe- uh, speaking of uh, pain, it seems that the pain he gets the most from is when he feels powerless. So mm-hmm. Bendy goes as far as to show him a simulation of everyone burning <laughs> to the ground. I oh, thought that oh. was, like, really funny, though. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, like, in a cruel kind of way, just because, like, I want to help all of them. No, you can only pick one. But this isn't fair. Oh, too late. You were too... Oh, they're all dead. The oh. end. <laughs> Let's run it again. Which just like her like cold calculation the entire time was really really but, great to me. But, but yeah, in any case, uh, that that ends up triggering TKO and he begins destroying things. Um, in the middle, I noticed that TKO teleports at some point. Did we know he could do that? Mm, I don't know. I don't remember. I don't yeah, see. like te- teleportation felt like an added power in this episode, and that might actually be very useful, but. Um, but eventually, uh, Dendi, like, we, we get the big, uh, monologue at the, at the end of, hey, he, Kao would never disregard my feelings just to see me push to my limits like I've been doing to him. Yeah. And then my heart melted. Oh. Yeah, the flashback mon- montage, and it even flashed back to, like, their first meeting with the junk fish, and I was like, oh, man, yeah, this is something that's been coming for a while that needed to be addressed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, then uh, then eventually, uh, then uh, um, Ko is begins to freeze out from his TKO. He falls, and uh, uh, Dendi dives to save him. But uh, TKO comes back. Uh, eventually, I think the first possession that Dendi has breaks. But Dendi apologizes, and Ko turns back. And hooray! <laughs> <laughs> It was more emotionally impactful than that, but yes, you captured the yeah. essence, <laughs> Alex. Mm-hmm. Yeah, more, more or less. No, but I, I think Dendi in particular sells that scene very yeah. well. It, it just it feels very... As we mentioned earlier, comparing to Peridot, it does feel a little bit like some of the Peridot monologues we've gotten in Steven Universe, where she's describing how she's changed as well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and that episode ends with the science fair. Uh, they eventually do Friendship Conquers All, and the, the ending gag is, eh, Group 4 did it better, and they have like two uh, two kids uh, holding hands two, the power of love. Two very sweet and like sort of feminine looking kids which makes me really happy mm. yeah I, I know I saw that, that uh, it was being claimed as gay on the Twitter uh, yeah. but like it, it's very ambiguous so, it like, is I, ambiguous I could... uh, yeah, yeah. But... that will yeah. still be my headcanon really cute uh, it's a good headcanon one, yeah. <laughs> one thing would be funny if they could have made them look a little bit like my Little Pony character, since this is about friendship and stuff. That's uh, uh, I think you're just seeing things. <laughs> I don't think My Little Pony has <laughs> trademarked friendship. I think other shows can still have it. <laughs> just because there are a bunch of purple colored people in this world does not mean they're inspired by My Little Pony. No, no, I said I wish they did that. I didn't say they did that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so that that was a mystery science fair. I, I think that that's probably the. Well, we we can talk about OK Dendi, but I do think that this one was very good for her character, especially just uh, considering their relationship between uh, Dendi and Ko. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. This is very like time. This this one definitely had a lot of character development. OK Dendi was more funny than like deep character development. Yeah, the Dendi. Uh, okay, Dendi. I think is leaning more on the hey, let's put Dendi in situations where Ko would be and see how how <laughs> yeah. weird it would be. Exactly. I, love, I love her notes. How like uh, you know you learn and you learn a lesson here or or whatever. I just uh, the uh, bird uh, expectations. Yeah, That's a, yeah. <laughs> uh, Michelle, what was your favorite gag of uh, Okay, Dendi? Um. When she gives Onesto constructive criticism and it makes him more powerful. But also when she takes off her shoes and she's like, I'm uncomfortable, and then puts them back on. It's like she went too far. She couldn't be that much like Kayo. She needed shoes back. But but I do think, like, some of her notes, like, yeah, like subvert expectations and stuff. That, in a way, is also kind of meta humor. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's definitely another instance where we're going into the meta to make a joke here. Mm hmm. 
The same about her saying, like, yeah. oh, this is the part where, like, I, like, realized that the moral was to be myself all along. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I think uh, also uh, one that I remember is uh, Dendi showing up to laugh at Rad sleeping, and it's like, huh, I get it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really good one, too. There were a lot of good ones that episode. Yeah. Uh, also, I just want to highlight from this episode, Ernesto finally gets a fight scene. You seemed yeah. really excited about that after yeah. the fact. Look, Ernesto has barely showed up in this show. I don't know you liked like him most... so much. Yeah, he's the only one I relate to of all those, <laughs> of all Botsman's children. Are you, you really know, into business to... also? <laughs> yeah. right. I, I'm like Vincent the Man from BoJack Horseman. I, I do a business. Oh, okay. Right? That's <laughs> No, but just like uh, Ernesto, just feels the most normal, and oh yeah, he, has, sure. he, has, he just hasn't gotten his chance to shine, and he finally did, even with with low self esteem at first, which I can also relate to. <laughs> oh, okay, this makes sense. Because for me, my favorite robot is definitely Raymond, and it's the exact opposite reason. He's just so extra. I can't that, not <laughs> love it. That's also uh, a, a strong, uh, a, st- a strong candidate. Yes. <laughs> um, Steve, your thoughts on Ernesto? Oh, oh look, Ernesto. Um, uh, yeah, he, he's like the most different of the children in terms of, yeah, he's not really a fighter. He's uh, he's more of the office worker. He's more of the administrative assistant. Um, but, yeah, I can't agree with Michelle. I love Raymond. I don't know, maybe because he, de- he definitely feels definitely the most anime type of character. <laughs> but, uh, and, uh, by the way, I just wonder, though, have... Uh, Dendi, like, how, I know Dendi has been has met Raymond. Has she met any of the other Bachman children yet? Uh, it's I don't possible. Know. Yeah, it's possible, but I feel like maybe she hasn't though, because she usually shows up when Ko needs her help, and that's usually not for like fighting stuff, but yeah. for tech stuff. We know she's aware of them though, because at the beginning of the Mystery Science Fair episode, she's like, "Oh, you have a Daryl card." So, oh like, yeah, the, 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 yeah, the oh, cowboy Daryl card. Oh yeah, and <laughs> I, and I just like to say when I saw that, I'm like, just thinking in my head though, my head Canada is that Ko he is he is frenemies with these robots. Well, yeah, you, you might because these are such goofy villains yeah. well, that there's definitely potential for it to just eventually, you know, um, cool cool off the yeah. rivalry. Yeah, I mean, Shannon though. did hook up with Rad for a hot second there. So. Yeah, I wonder, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wonder is eventually they're going to be like I'm not sure Boxman himself, but his turn going to be like um, Ice King, like I was just sort of going to slowly transform from like villain to something else. Right, <laughs> but at, at least in this case, Ernesto takes Dendi's lessons to be more villainous. So you know. <laughs> uh, also, I want to say like the the music that plays while yeah, Ernesto no, is fighting. No, I loved the- it. <laughs> it was so good. It was like electro swing almost. I think really, also- I remember the music too. It stood out to me. I just saw something totally scary. Um, what about T Dendi? Uh, Turbo Dendi, I, if she Turbo turned Dendi. like an evil version of herself, I th- that'd be super scary. I don't think we could beat her because she is just she would be unstoppable. <laughs> well, what if TKO and Dendi fuse? Is that what you're proposing? <laughs> no, 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 I'm just saying if she like you know, somehow s- something made her more more evil, turned her evil, like she would just be like the most unstoppable force because. As we saw in this episode, she kind of knows how to do it right. Her her advice to Ernesto. Sure. Uh, although, if M- Mystery Science Fair taught, besides what that episode showed us, Dendi is a pure being. Then she cannot be corrupted that <laughs> yeah. way. I hope. I hope not. I, I hope not either. <laughs> <laughs> or a bizarre um, world, or we go to a bizarre world, and yeah, we we can all. Like, with how meta this show is, uh, that wouldn't surprise me <laughs> the least. We just go to an anti-universe where the Botsman kids are good. Yeah. <laughs> with that, we have uh, Let's Watch the Pilot. We can go back to that for a little bit. We've already touched upon it a couple of times. But that whole framing device is, uh, hey, we're going to present the pilot and pretend that the characters are actually real actors. And, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Ooh. Uh, and uh, th- this is actually hosted by um, the, the, our local news person, Dynamite Watkins, who is also voiced by Mary Elizabeth McGlynn. <laughs> so, oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Oh, She's from now. Okay, now I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> 
So, yeah, but she pulls out the pilot, and uh, they show the uh, old stuff. H- had you guys seen the pilot before this episode? Uh, yes. I-, I know Steve had. Michelle, you had, too? Yeah. yeah. When yeah. it when it first came out, like, years ago, oh. I saw it, and mm-hmm. I felt okay about it, but I think, like, okay KO as a show is, like, all the best parts of that, but also, like, reformed to be stronger than the pilot was, which makes sense. That's pretty much how pilots usually are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely was a bit late. I don't think I saw the pilot until very recently. Like, I already watched a bunch of OKKO OK episodes before I, I seeked out the pilot. So were you surprised it, by how different the designs were? <laughs> a, a little bit, yeah. I, I yeah. definitely appreciate the changes they made. Me to the too. Design <laughs> since. Yeah, me too. The joke they make about their noses was so good. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Steve? Yeah, yeah. It definitely kind of reminds me of the differences between uh, the Steven Universe pilot in the series and how just weird it is. It's weird, it is. but it's so good. Like, yeah. when I saw that pilot, I was so excited because it felt so different than everything that was on Cartoon Network at the time. And I was like, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> and Carol was like, that's fun. Oh, a supermarket for villains. So we're going to hang out at a supermarket the whole time. Okay, how is that going to be fun? But then they they did make it fun, so good job, guys. Although I do think there's a thing there where like both pilots were ve- felt a little bit more stylized than what they ended up with. Like the the, um, the actual product on Cartoon Network just feels a lot cleaner in both instances. Yeah, I think that's pilot. intentional though, because the le- the more be. detail you have for characters, the more time it takes to. Oh. It's just the more you have to draw and animate. So I feel like the. The getting rid of that detail was a pretty. That happens a lot. I feel it seemed though. It seemed though the pilot was going to be more um ensemble. It wasn't going to be like starring Ko. It if you go by the original ep- like series title. Yeah, and they do actually make make that a part of the of this episode in particular. The fact that hey, the show's named after Ko, and we're your co stars. Like the, the Enid and Rad Yo, seem to have some kind of tension. The <laughs> drama. Yeah, if anything, if I, I seen the pilot, it looked like uh, Mr. Gar was going to be sort of the lead character, and then these children like were who work under him. But and pretty much everyone would take turns having their own episodes. But um, the, and they do make fun of some of the stuff that's been left behind. We already mentioned the noses. They have a joke at the end of the episode where just pepper fell on them. They sneezed their noses off. Yeah. Um, uh, also, that they make fun of Enid's loin flap. Um, that 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 was an odd moment, especially <laughs> them adding in bloopers of Enid tripping over it. Uh, um, I, I I do think Enid's uniform has gone for the better. Although I I don't think the loin flap is as bad as they made it out to be in mm-hmm. in the show. No, that felt kind of a lot. <laughs> but mm-hmm. I agree, yeah. the the upgrade was for the best. But and so eventually they come to blows and uh, or Rad breaks down at the audience for laughing at him. Um, uh, then they go to the to backstage. We reveal that Ko has an acting coach apparently. <laughs> <laughs> it was just uh, hammering home the child prodigies thing, mm-hmm. and uh, we get the emotional center. Like uh, I'm just trying to keep up with you guys. Uh, you, mm-hmm. you guys are the best actors, and you know what? And Rad feel you know, bad. You know what I would like to have seen? Maybe if they, maybe in this can that there was this Ko is like the second actor to play Ko in reference to him having like two voice actresses. Yeah, we we didn't really get a voice joke because no, I, I, I could have done that. Yeah, in the pilot, what well, was it the same as uh, as the the current one, or was no, it a different one? No, it was a different lady. But did they yeah. dub it? Did they dub over from the original pilot, like the different the, the vo- KO voices? I'm not sure. I don't know. I, mean, I, I didn't really notice it. Honestly, I never know. I the vo- two the voices sound similar to me enough, but so that would have been like if you want to do some meta humor, you should have gotten even more in terms of that. Yeah, like, hey, what happened to your voice, KO? Or something I like imagine that. they had, like, so many things they wanted to reference that they had to, like, pick a handful that they felt oh, you the strongest. Make, well, you couldn't make it a KO. The actor playing KO is like, it's sort of a, has a twin, twin brother, and they, they like the original, like the old <laughs> version of. Okay. Yeah, that could have That's been definitely good. an idea. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, other things in here. Oh, there's, there's also these uh, th- these scenes. For, uh, the first version is where a uh, botsman uh, complains, hey, my scenes got cut. 
And it's like, oh, we send them to a different studio, and they just show them doing the little, little Looney Tunes dance. What's up with oh. that? I oh. did not know how to feel about that. <laughs> It, it was definitely very strange. I, I know that's an, <laughs> it's an homage to o- older style animation yeah. that uh, Ian Jones Cordy, I'm sure, is a fan of. But it's just it, it feels so so different from the so animation jarring. we're used to these days. Mm, yeah, totally. but, but I love tributes like that. I'm mean, like, like I've seen that before. Little Witch Academia did something like that, so cool with me. So you're saying this is the hot new trend in shows, yeah. in animated shows? Perhaps so, yeah. I'm waiting for Steven to do it. And, and of course, Star. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I mean, we, uh, Steven Universe, we had a golden opportunity with that Uncle Grandpa crossover. You yeah. could have done anything there. <laughs> the way your tone when you said that out. Uh, oh, but so it, much. It, it's, I'm sure if Uncle Grandpa wasn't canceled, they probably could have done a crossover with OKKO. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we we already did our Captain Planet crossover, so anything's possible. That's true. Anything's possible. Yeah. But um, yeah. Anything else you guys want to pick out of? Let's watch the pilot. And anything else that stood out? Mm. Uh, I, I think all in all, this is an average episode. There are like moments that are funny, moments that kind of drag, but yeah, it, it's not it's not a bad episode, but it's just kind of okay, especially compared to the other ones we had in this batch. Yeah. So you're saying it was. <laughs> Okay, okay, episode. <laughs> I don't make puns very often, but when they do happen. The worst part <laughs> is I think we, we use that every single episode. <laughs> the show. Yeah, Sometimes we watch there are exemplary episodes, like there are episodes that rise, rise above yeah. and beyond. The problem they're is, better than okay. The yeah, is, better than okay. That's the, the problem reason. is we do so many episodes per podcast that event that not all going to be like great. Some of them are going to be okay. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I, I am interested to get into into what your guys' uh, opinions on Lad and Logic because this one is the <laughs> is the least KO centric episode yes. of the group. Well, uh, let and me it, say hot take here. KOs okay, are go ahead. KOs are racist. <laughs> Wait, what? Robot racist, like he's like the beginning of the episode. I'm talking about. It's like because he just thought that all robots are bad if you are trying to kill him. Remember beginning of the episode, like that bug give him a haircut. Like, oh no, don't kill me. Yeah, it was kind of weird. Like, hey, you're a robot. Yeah, like, I think you didn't notice That's this before. <laughs> uh, but but what are, what are your general opinions on the episode, Steve? It's fine. Um, it's great to get some more backstory and. I love all this backstory episode, and we got some more on Boxman, and we kind of see a transition of, I like to see a flashback of Mr. Gar not being a total geek. So he might at least be cool. Uh, you, Michelle, your thoughts? <laughs> I love this episode. Oh, okay. If it, so, I mean, I love Dendi so much, so it was a hard choice to say yeah. which is better, Latin logic or mystery science fair. Um, but I mean, I love me some Fox man, and this yeah. was so good seeing him and logic just like, you know, just like he has this dream and he like helps him build mm-hmm. his empire. And then like, you see like the progression of Lord Boxman like getting side check, like, Oh, he, he's building something across the street. Now I can't focus. Now I just have to destroy him. You just um, can't close the curtain. It makes so much sense because you'd think, like, how could Lord Boxman ever think to, like, it, like you know, sell products or do any business stuff if he's just so obsessed with the people across the street? And this is the reason. He didn't come up with that plan. His, got, his logic robot did. So this, it filled in some gaps for me. And I uh, I just, I really enjoyed the flashback this, a lot. This, this, this episode makes me want to see a flashback to Boxman's childhood. I got to know his about his childhood because something yeah. happened. I'm starting to wonder why he hates heroes so much because I don't think it's just because they get on his nerves with their friendship. Maybe he was rejected from Point or something, and now he's really bitter about it. I think it's deeper than I think it's way back to childhood. I think something to do maybe with his mother or something. I think he might have some. <laughs> why? <laughs> why his mother? He's never mentioned his family. He's like such a child though. He, right now, he's like he has a he has like a temperament of, of a child sometimes. And so I think this goes back to childhood, but that's just my opinion. My pre- 
I guess my theory. Well, we're we're definitely working towards something it's like something. that because yeah. just just all these backstory episodes, it's a lot more than I expected from this show, to be honest. Mm-hmm. So it, it's definitely a, a nice surprise every time we continue to get get more insight into the past of this universe. And, and I'm glad, Michelle, you, you're more enthusiastic about this. Yeah, because well, I know this episode, like, it has all the elements of a really good episode. Like, it's, it's a character that you wouldn't think to think about, like, hey, I wonder about that guy. He's, like, kind of far down the priority list, mm-hmm. but they managed to give him a really interesting backstory. And plus, Botsman and Mr. Gar, like, they're both really good characters, too. Um, I, I enjoyed it as well. I don't think I'd, I put it on par with the Dendi episodes, but it was certainly a fine episode, and uh, I like seeing Logic's sto- uh, story of uh, rising from being a villain to being a, a hero. Um, I like Mr. Gar too, especially in the middle where he he's like giving this uh, speech to Logic, like, "Hey, you got a um, creation over destruction." That's basically yeah. his uh, his motto, right? And it's just like kind of a yeah, it it feels nice. <laughs> <laughs> like Gar's a genuine person. Yeah, and it's not something that they do very often with him because, uh, like today, Mister Gar is just kind of very stodgy. All business, and, uh, or when he's yeah. next to Carol and he's just like a mess. <laughs> right. So yeah, we don't see just... him be wise as often. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's a nice extra side that we don't see very often from him. Um, let's see. And 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 Mister and um, Bo- Lord, Lord Botsman, as usual, is his crazy self. Um, nothing new <laughs> in that regard. Uh, um, yeah, I, I just want to, no, I don't know which episode it was, but they did sort of hint, I think it probably was the mystery science thing where they hinted at Kale, something to, about his dad, like, something like repressed memory about his dad, I'm not sure, I think Dendy's... Yeah, the, yeah, there was a weird joke in there where the, uh, Dendy was giving him Rorschach tests, and it's like, daddy's, daddy's... Right, daddy's. that was, but I think that's just because, like... His dad's down the picture, so he thinks about him a lot, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's a bit of stretch to connect to this episode, but no, you no, know. No, <laughs> you try. I just remember now, since I'm thinking of Mr. Gar, he's like he's such a like he's like closest thing that Ko has to a father figure at the moment, and I just thought, wait a minute, I just remember this other thing for another episode. Better bring it up. <laughs> No, and yeah, that, that's definitely a theory that's floating around, but uh, th- this episode, I don't, I don't think gives much credence towards that. <laughs> um, uh, let's see here. Anything else from this episode? Uh, uh, also, the, there's just a random cameo from Crinkly Wrinkly, who is usually also a crazy person. Crinkly just shows Wrinkly up like... got more of a spotlight than Logic did in terms of... Did he? Yeah! No, the episode, um, <laughs> where they all turn into animals, and he bites them. That was kind of a him episode. Kind of. Kind of. Kind of. For like four minutes, maybe. Well, we, we still need his backstory episode. Please, backstory, you know it's coming. You know what? He's in the background all the time. How did he get the money to get that fly suit? Uh, no. He, he's everywhere. He, in he a knows weird, to do things. In a weird way, the logic, he reminds me a bit of Dendi. Especially her, her development. How I think Dendi's like her like before she got this development in these episodes she was pretty much all about logic she just thinks of things logically so mm-hmm. I see parallels there and i'd like to yeah. meet I, I don't know if they ever met has denji and logic ever met because i definitely oh, yeah i, I want to see did. i think i think they'll get along great yeah uh, no I feel, they didn't <laughs> i feel like in the very first denji yeah, episode they, they, went, they, they they wanted to take like a glorb out of his like um razor thing and yeah. Kay was like, no, do that. that. That's a family heirloom. She's like, so. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the entirety of the Dendi logic interaction exactly. so far. But yeah. <laughs> but maybe now they'll be friends now that Dendi has empathy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh, I mean, like, once again, before we go, we gotta mention, I mentioned again, the uh, Boxman children, we saw them as babies. I, I, I didn't know it worked that way. So- the Jethro that was all swaddled up, it was just so good. And that's, like, I think that's why I love Lord Boxman so much, because, like, he's, like, not a great villain. He gets distracted. He has this childish side, but he he's a robot dad, and I cannot, I have to get behind that. That is so good. He has all these course, kids. But, of course, they have to give him the line, I will never regret this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and, 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 and I, I remember Alex, you posted this thing on, on Discord, this video of, of um, villainous and uh, think of starting about father figure, like yeah, between uh, Fink and Professor Venomous. Yes, I mean. yes. That's why they're so good together. They're yeah. both dads, yeah. evil dads <laughs> for life. <laughs> Make villains be good fathers, at least. Yes, yes. please. Oh, yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a classical against against stereotype uh, expect of tropes like uh, how we have villains and they have children. They're just as bad fathers, like uh, Fire Lord Ozai, for example. So I'm glad they sort of break the mold here. Right. Although, let's not give Batman too much credit. He does scream at his children a whole lot. He d- and he does not give them unconditional love. That is why they are so earnestly trying to get his affection all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and also just a nice... Uh, uh, because uh, they don't show baby Raymond, but I think that's because Raymond was created in, in one of these earlier episodes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, after Daryl and Shannon fail a bunch, yeah. that's true. But but he didn't come out as a baby, so no. like, how exactly does this work? That's why he's so extra. <laughs> uh, I, I I don't know. I, at least it shows some good continuity, even though the show doesn't really use continuity. I'm just guessing maybe Boxman at the time he could just make baby robots, and then and as years went by, he got better. He able to make them more grown up. Yeah, he that's probably possible. just like upgraded them or something. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I think we've covered um, the four episodes that are currently available that we haven't covered up to now. So uh, of these four, which which are your favorite? Just to wrap up here, uh, Michelle. I, I think objectively, Mystery Science Fair Twenty One X is better. Um, but I like Lad and Logic just as much, so they're both number one for me. Yeah. Okay. I, Steve? I give with Michelle that like, logically uh no pun intended, <laughs> but uh Mystery Science uh Fair twenty X is probably the best of the episodes, but my favorite though I just, is okay, Dendy. It's just I just love mm. that episode. <laughs> it's uh, <super> I, I, <laughs> I think I'm with Steve here. Like uh, uh, Mystery Science Fair twenty one X is just a really good episode overall. But I think I had more fun watching OK Dendy yeah. because of all the all, all the different jokes in yeah. that episode, and because it's even more focused on Dendy, like yeah. it's just her. Agree. So, that yeah. is a very good reason. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, my my feeling the episode, I'm a sort of mix. I'm glad we got so much Dendy, but still bummed. No LRD yet. When's she coming? She's back? coming back. <laughs> uh, uh, and please let it, let her be in the same. She and Red Action come back in the same episode. No, I, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no triangles. <laughs> Look, I'm just surprised Steve lasted uh, how long? Like 35 <laughs> minutes with, without saying, oh God, "Hey, LED should be true. in this episode." Nope. <laughs> this no, no, hey, they gave me a lot of denty here, so that's probably why. Ah, okay, you were satisfied yeah, enough with that. Filled, you can move on to the next one. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think we've satisfied our Dendi quota for the month, and uh, that, 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 oh. this was definitely a good supply. Good which, which does sort of impress me a bit, because I have a feeling the next back episode is going to have barely any Dendi. Yeah, but like if these are the two back-to-backs, I'm good with that injection. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so un- until we get more OKKO OK episodes, uh, you can find out all the info on our podcast and other shows we're covering at OverlyAnimated.com. If you want to talk to us about your opinions on OKKO, OK we have a channel for that at OverlyAnimated.com slash Discord. You can talk to us about any your opinions on this show there or any other show that we cover. Um, you can also support us via Patreon at patreon.com slash overlyanimated. We do want to give thanks to all of our current patrons, especially our patron of the podcast, Kent, a.k.a. Kent Brockman. And uh, thanks, as always, to our Patreon executive producers, John, Ryan, Steve, Andy, and Hugh. And, uh, yeah, we'll... Not we'll, we'll s- oh, yes, me too, but, you know, that's <laughs> f- fine, fine print. Alex? Fine print. Um... Uh, but yeah, until we get that Brandon episode and hopefully other episodes, oh, uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk okay Ko again. But uh, until then, we'll see you n- next time. Adios. Bye. Bye. <laughs>